Hello everyone, my name is John Hammond and I am so excited to share with you guys a project that has been a labor of love for such a long time now. Uh, it's a project myself and my roommate Caleb have been working on for two years, realistically. I guess the two years ago since I started kind of the living document of CTF Katana as a reference for some players that has got a lot of traction on my GitHub repository. And one year since we started the code, more so than that now, over a year since we started the actual repository for the software project of Katana that will attempt to automatically solve some basic beginner capture the flag challenges. So finally, it is open source and available and free and ready for your use. So I want to show you guys how you can download it and get started with it all right now in this video. So here we go. Um, let's get my face over to the side on the screen and I'm going to fire up a web browser because you can find this online at my GitHub repository. If you go to github.com slash John Hammond, you can find all of my repositories. You can find the original CTF Katana, which is the living document for notes and guidelines back in February of 2018 of some things you can try and do and work on for a capture the flag challenge. But now we also have Katana itself forward slash Katana the automatic CTF challenge solver that is written in Python 3. Um, we're going to have a stream probably later on, Caleb and myself, uh, showcasing this and doing things with it and exploring it and talking about it. So hopefully we can answer any of your questions, fingers crossed. Um, but we do have a, a couple notes in here that, yes, this is meant to be an automatic capture the flag challenge solver. Um, with the disclaimer, incredible disclaimer, that this may suck. This might not work. This isn't going to solve everything. There's no way this could solve everything. This is something to try, something to maybe help you that might use a utility that you hadn't thought of to use or you might otherwise forget to do. That is really the whole thesis of Katana and what it's always meant to be. And admittedly, it is not heavily maintained at the moment. Um, this was something that we were really, really passionate about once we got started in it, once we wrote it, once we were in the weeds. Um, but then life gets in the way. As you know, it always does. It's funny, if you actually take a look at the insights here, if you go look at uh, the contributions and things here, um, you can see February 2019, we kind of kicked it off. And there was a lot of development in those first couple months. And then it petered out to, hey, I started a new job. I'm traveling. Caleb's traveling. We get a little bit more into it. And then it fades in and out. It's become a little bit of a roller coaster. So now we have got it to a point where we're happy with it. The framework, I, I hope, is cool. It's really helpful for you guys. Uh, it's extensible. You can hopefully solve things and add things in a quick and easy way. Um, but we make a note. It is not heavily maintained because we will not always be readily available for things that need to be fixed or things that need to be changed or bugs or errors. You might still find a couple bugs and errors or Python exceptions that are thrown out in rows uh, and raised. So anyway, another disclaimer, uh, Katana will run potentially bad and evil things. It'll do malicious stuff because you are acting as a hacker or offensive uh, kind of adversary in a capture the flag scene, typically. So it will do offensive things. Do not ever, ever, ever use this whatsoever at all against anything that you don't have the permission to test and operate on uh, because Katana will automatically, recursively do things that could very well be bad. So, okay, this is the repository. Uh, I want to get it spun up and I want to show you guys how you can do it in a clean, new virtual machine. So I'm going to fire this up in uh, 1804 instance that I have running, or 1904? Yeah, 1904, sorry. And uh, we have git installed here, so I can git clone this. Um, let me make sure that I can actually, you know what, let's just type it. Because it is public, it should not ask you for any credentials. You should just be able to go ahead and download Katana. And once you have it downloaded, you can go ahead and install it with everything that's already mentioned and discussed in the readme. If you don't already have some of these packages, you'll want to go ahead and install them or update them. Uh, these are just kind of convenience things, and I'm showing this on Ubuntu for um, your use in case you are running on Ubuntu. I am, and I figured that, hey, that's a pretty common one I actually use. Maybe you could use it in Kali, etc. cetera, um, but we do not venture out to offer your support for those other distributions. These are just what we developed on. I wrote an Ubuntu, Caleb wrote an Arch. There were some comments to do that, but I will show you the Docker container that will go ahead and do this very, very easily soon. 
Okay, now let's paste that in and fire it away. So there are obviously a lot of dependencies for what Katana uses because it needs a lot of different Python libraries and it also depends on some external tools or some of the regular utilities you might use in a capture the flag competition like Binwalk, like Forensics, Foremost, um, Exif Tools, StegSolve, ZSteg, JSteg, Snow, etc. And tons of them and tons of them. So installing each of them is a little bit tougher to do when you end up running it actually uh, on your own system. Depending on, you're, you're gonna need to actually figure out the package manager or repository stuff to get all those tools, put them in your path so Katana can actually use them. Uh, I have my machine already configured that way, like my, my personal physical laptop. So does Caleb. I'm sure a lot of other people already do that do capture the flag. But from a bare new machine, uh, while this is going through and installing a lot of things, it's not going to have all those things already set up. It needs NPy. It needs uh, APK tool. Tons of these other external dependencies that uh, Katana might use. You might have to go through the process of actually tracking that all down. So I'm going to let this finish installing just so you can see the rest of the normal setup on a physical machine. And then we'll roll into the Docker container. Okay, so the apt install command just finished running. That took about five minutes on this virtual machine. Uh, now that that has been set up and created, you do, however, need to go ahead and create a virtual environment that you're going to run Katana out of. Again, I'm making sure you use the latest Python version, uh, at least 3.7 in this case, and you'll create a environment, virtual environment folder. I pull from system site packages because we just installed Dbus, and I've actually had some issues where it's been trying to pull Dbus and it hasn't been able to. Uh, but anyway, we're just using the VNV environment uh, or library module to create a virtual environment that you should be able to do that because we installed that just fine. And they'll activate it and actually install all of the dependencies for Python through pip. So that takes a lot more time as well. We can go ahead and slap these in though. Now that's activated it and it will go ahead and compile and create everything that it needs for Katana itself to work as a module. I'll again pause the video because it takes a little bit of time for this to happen and I'll get back to you once the process is done. Okay, that took about a minute on this virtual machine and now Katana should be installed and accessible and able to be used within this virtual machine. Uh, you can typically invoke Katana in two ways. If you have it installed as a module, just as we just did, now you could run Katana just like that as a command, or you could also specify it as a module for it to run. Um, in our case, we need to specify some arguments for this to actually work with. It needs to know the flag format that this CTF is going to end up working with or end up asking for. So that can be specified with the tack F argument. And we can just say kind of a regular expression right here. Let's just say flag is kind of the opening header or prefix for all the flags. And inside curly braces, we can have match anything. So I use a period for any character, asterisk for as many of them as possible. And then I use a question mark to make that lazy because I want to find just up until the first occurrence of that ending or closing curly brace. So let's run that. Uh, but this will also yell at us now that it has ran previously, it has created a results directory and Katana won't want to run if there are already results that Katana had previously from an earlier runtime or execution process because it doesn't want to clobber those. So if you want to clobber those on your own, then you can run Katana with tac tac force and that will remove the results directory that was saved previously and now use it for just this runtime's results. Um, you may or may not want to do that depending on your actual uh, work that you do to, or how often you use Katana for a CTF. If you're using it with a CTF, you might want to have it running and working alongside you, uh, just on and available, and you'll see how that works once we get moving here. But let's run tac tac force uh, but it will tell me, hey, we're missing some dependencies, and it will allow us to actually... It'll still run Katana, it'll work with us, but it knows these are the dependencies that are missing, and we won't be able to actually use those because they're not available on our system. This does make things nice and easy for us though because we're now working inside of Katana. Katana has a couple commands or things we could actually use. Uh, in this case I actually just want to exit out because I want to show you that syntax that we could just kind of copy and paste and steal from this uh, readme here. Now the Katana has been installed, we can run it, we can use tac tac force to remove the results directory, specify a flag format, and here I'm supplying a target what I'm actually trying to evaluate and have Katana work against. In this case, 
This is just some base 64 encoded rendition of that flag syntax. So I can copy and paste this in and Katana will automatically detect, hey, that's base 64. It'll decode that base 64 and it'll give us this flag and then it'll tell me, hey, we solved it as a quick notification. That works nice and easy for us. I could do the exact same thing if I want to specify this as a module. So I'll say Python attack M and that will again run the same way, uh, but now it will kind of display out and work just as that. Uh, if you wanted to do something, again, we saw in that help output, we have a couple options that we can run. Um, we actually also have commands like target and target will allow us to view or add or kind of queue some new things that we're actually searching for between the, what we're trying to actually have to kind of work through and run. So let's actually check out target uh, list or LS as a quick shortcut. We had this that we supplied as a target Katana tells me it already finished it, already ran through it, and every single target that you run is going to have a unique hash or its representation of how you're actually going to denote and reference that target again in your use of Katana. If it found a flag, it'll display it there for us, but I want to show you this hash and how we can use it. Because we have those other options, we can say target, just as we saw before, we could view a specific hash. I could paste that in, or we could even just tab complete it, and it'll show options if you had multiple targets, and we could check out some of the JSON results or actual findings that kind of occurred when we were looking at this specific target. So it tried to run the base64 unit, it determined if it was base64, it actually decoded it successfully, and found a flag through that. It also tried to run a Caesar cipher, and it looks like that's all it ran through because it already found the flag right away. We could, if we wanted to, check out the solution for that. Target, you could see solution is an option. Target, solution, and then again the hash. And if we have multiple steps, maybe it was a base64 to base58 encoded thing, we could then see all of that syntax. Or we could check out target flags, again on a unit, and see what flag came from that. So that's just that simple target command that you run in the interpreter of Katana. Uh, you can hit Control c or Control d to break out of it. Uh, you might hit Control c again if you hit Control d or just type exit to cleanly exit, but that will close out Katana for us. So, Okay, that was some quick usage, but I want to show you now the Docker image, the Docker container. If you don't have these dependencies, like we saw NPy it, Snow, JSTAG, and some of those other things, I guess it's NP, people yell at me for that, uh, if you don't have these dependencies and you don't want to bother with them, you can work with this Docker container. This is all kind of explained and described in the Docker directory inside of the repository. Go check this out. Inside of this file, we have a, inside of this folder, we have a Docker file, which you could just simply run Docker build and that just with. Keep in mind, this takes a long time uh, because it's trying to, Okay, grab all of these dependencies that you just saw work in our virtual machine, uh, even compile some of the other things that are necessary for the libraries, and go grab those other external dependencies that we don't even have in our virtual machine, but you might want for a capture the flag competition. So we could do that with Docker. I'm going to do this on my own physical machine now. I'm going to actually pivot to that. Let's cd docker. Uh, I'm sorry, get into the Katana directory first. And we have this Docker file here. So let's go ahead and Docker build Katana just like this. And this is going to take a bit of some time, but we'll go ahead and let it run. Okay, so now the Docker uh, image has successfully been built. Uh, I do want to actually show you what this Docker file uh, sets up and builds and, and uses here. So I'll drag this over. Uh, let's set that syntax to bash so it's a little bit more color oriented. Uh, we're going to use Python 3.8 to go ahead and pull this down from. Uh, we grab all the same dependencies that we had used previously and we go ahead and install again those other things like ZStag, JSTag, NPyt, NPyt, Snow, etc, etc. And then we go ahead and grab the repository and install everything. This also works with a katana.sh script. The katana.sh script is kind of handy. Caleb put this together. This will actually determine, hey, uh, depending on since you've built this Docker image, let's go ahead and reach out to the GitHub repository and see if there are any changes. Because uh, you may be running an old 
out of date version of this Docker instance or of this Docker image. If that's the case, it says, oh, we found some changes that the GitHub has that's a little bit further ahead in the development. Uh, we could actually pull this down and let you run with that copy of Katana. It's not going to end up running it and making it persistent. It can't update Katana and keep it within that Docker instance. You have to go rebuild that Docker image, but at least for that quick temporary on the fly thing, if you know, hey, you have an uh, out of date rendition of Katana, it will go ahead and, and pull that down for you. Or it'll say, oh, we have the updated most up to date and latest version of Katana, then it won't uh, bother. It'll say you're up to date, but you will get notified, hey, if we have a newer version, you can rebuild your Docker instance with just that same command that we ran earlier. Also, excuse me, it's running Katana, and it's also checking, with some arguments here, the katana.ini file. So, Katana works with INI configuration files, which help specify some of the arguments or parameters or settings that Katana might use for its own operations. So I'll show you some of these here. In the examples directory, we have a couple of them. Here is a simple um, example.ini where we just specify, okay, the manager that's working in the background of Katana needs to know what flag format this CTF might end up using. We also have a couple INI files that are for a, for a specific case, like, okay, maybe working against Pico CTF or a CTFD instance, but I'll get into that in a later video. Um, I do want to just talk about how we can also specify other arguments for the monitor and how we can monitor specific directories that you're working with inside of Katana or with Katana. So maybe if you're working through a CTF and you download a file, Katana will identify, oh, you downloaded this, it'll automatically rip through it, and if it finds a, a flag, it'll even automatically submit it for you. So that's kind of neat and kind of cool. Um, so those are those INI files. We'll get more in-depth on those soon. I do want to show you this monitor functionality. Uh, let's go take a another look at that readme, though, to see how it works. Um, because when you run this instance, you can make it interactive and in terminal mode. That's the IT arguments. The TACV directory is going to end up sort of mounting one position in your file system to a position in the actual Docker container. So... Katana in the Docker instance works out of this forward slash data uh, directory. And that's where it's going to look for targets automatically and store results in a results directory automatically. So if you make any changes, you need to know, okay, that has to all work with that data directory that you might make. So we could go ahead and test that if we wanted to. Let me um, make a new, I guess, directory here. And a new shell. Let's make directory temp Timo. Apparently, that works just fine. Timo. So what we could do is we could Docker run. Let's actually make a uh, data directory. Actually, let's let's see how it works without it. I'm going to end up using my present working directory, just as with some command substitution to specify that to slash data inside of the Docker container. We'll say TAC IT for interactive in the terminal and then Katana as our instance name. It knows that, okay, this is the absolute latest one, but we don't have that configuration file. This data directory or this directory that we're working in needs to have a Katana.ini file. So let me go ahead and create that. I'll just say Katana.ini manager, the simplest rendition we can have. Let's have a flag format can equal uh, flag with anything in there. Great. Now, if I were to try and run that one more time, Katana's up to date, fantastic. It's gonna want to monitor that targets directory and it's doing that automatically. We actually have that command monitor. We could check out monitor ls to see what we're monitoring. Right now we don't have anything in there uh, because we don't have that actual directory created. So let me stop Katana and let's make that directory targets. Great, he's in there. Now when I run this from the current directory, it should be able to not give us that warning. It won't tell us, oh, we actually don't have um, the, excuse me, the targets directory. But because the uh, results directory is in there, we can't uh, run just yet. So let's say force can equal true inside of our katana.ini file. 
You could specify tac tac force as other arguments, but the way that this Docker instance works, this Docker container works, is because the command arguments that are being supplied, because they're already defined in that Docker file, if you supply tac tac force or tac f as other arguments, then it's not going to automatically pull this katana.ini file or automatically use this monitor setup at, uh, with the monitoring directories. So that's kind of a bummer. Uh, it's not that big of a bummer because honestly, if you're using Katana as a Docker instance, you should probably already have a directory all set up for that specific CTF and have a configuration file already set up and configured for that CTF. You shouldn't need any of these other arguments because everything should be contained inside of a specific organized directory with its own specific and organized configuration file. So now we can run this because we've ran TAC force, we've included that in our configuration file, and now it is running and waiting for us. So we could monitor and check out what we're actually listening. We do have monitoring capability in this directory targets that is inside of on our file system, this targets directory. So I'll move in there. We know our flag format is flag, which is kind of curly braces. So what I'll do is I'll have Katana waiting in the background and let's say some new file just suddenly appeared in my file system. Maybe I downloaded it, maybe it was created, but either way, Katana will monitor it and go ahead and create it. Let's echo flag. Um, this is a flag. I'll use tac n so I have no new line in that case. Now let's go ahead and pass that to base 64. Let's go ahead and pass it to base 58. And now we have this string. Let's go ahead and create something. I'll call it like something.txt. And Katana will automatically find it, queue it, and then it'll start to track it down and find the flag. Base 58, base 64, we found it. Awesome. Katana did that all for us. And it's running inside that Docker instance. Some of the issues that you might run to when you're running with the Docker container is that you won't have your new flags automatically pulled and copied into your clipboard. You also won't find those desktop notifications that will explain when you actually solve the challenge like we kind of just did. Uh, that's okay because we do want you to be built out to the position where you don't need to use this Docker convenience uh, image, but you can. It's available, it's meant for you as the end user if you don't want to pull down all these dependencies and add them to your path. Obviously, we would recommend that, though. So let me uh, activate this environment. Bin activate. Now I can run Katana. Uh, I will specify that configuration file that I just made, katana.ini. And we could manually go ahead and add that monitoring capability because that monitor command in here, we can just simply add something. We can simply say monitor add, and it needs to know whether or not we can recurse on that. If it's a directory, everything inside of that directory as well, which might be handy for when you're using a, again, specified and designated folder for your CTFs. Well, let's go ahead and monitor add tac tac recursive. Uh, and I'll specify an absolute path here. Home, John, Timo targets. Good. And now that monitor list, that's already set up for me. I can go ahead and create that file once more. Uh, and because that already existed, it didn't do anything new with it. So let's just say uh, new file.txt down here. Katana will go ahead and run, spin it off, and it should track down the flag relatively quickly for us. You can see I have my notification just display up here. And that is uh, what you wouldn't get, just that simple nicety if you if you were running it with the Docker instance and Docker container. So, okay, that is the very, very simple basic options. Uh, again, you could supply these targets as an argument. You can add them specifically if you wanted to with the target queue or target add. You could monitor directories of that. Let me show you that uh, target add again. Let's target uh, flag. Let me uh, do that actually. Let's say... Let's, with a sh let's use a shell. Let's use the exclamation point to get a shell. Let's say echo flag. This is Caesar. And then let's pipe that to Caesar. Um, oh, can I not do that? Probably. With a, with a subshell in that. Oh, we need to specify an argument to Caesar. That's probably why. Uh, Caesar 13. There we go. Okay. Sorry. 
Now that that is set up, uh, let's go ahead and target add just this. And then, okay, Caesar will automatically find that because it has support for those. You might be wondering, what are all these units and things that are actually running and how is this all happening? Uh, and for that, I would point you towards the documentation. Katana does have docs and documentation that comes with the repository. It's not already built. Um, if you wanted to go view these, you could either build them yourself with simply make HTML using Sphinx, or you can go check it out at ctf-katana.readthedocs.io. That is publicly available, and that will explain everything that we have written thus far in our documentation initiative. Um, this may have holes, this may have gaps, but it will tell you a little bit about what you're installing and why, the necessary binary external dependencies, uh, how to go ahead and set this up, et cetera, et cetera. And it'll get to what this REPL is, the interactive case that you're working with, some other command line arguments you specify, and how you can go ahead and even write your own units or add things or modify things, and how it all works behind the scenes with the manager, monitor, unit, and target classes. If you wanted to know about these specific units, you can go into each specific section and learn more about them. If I go into cryptography, here we have a couple cryptography units that are available and why they work the way that they work. So... You could explore and read about them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, um, I've talked a lot, and I think that's all that I want to showcase because now we have Katana installed, set up, worked with the Docker instance, working with bare metal on our host, using some notifications, getting things in our clipboard, adding files, adding targets, monitoring directories, etc. Uh, I do want to showcase how you can actually do this with a simple CTF that's running with CTFD on the internet or even Pico CTF. So I will do that in the next video, but that's it. Here it is. Here's Katana. Uh, again, disclaimer, it might not be everything that you want it to be. Who knows? Uh, I think it does a few things. And it does some, some cool things, uh, and the things that it does do, uh, I hope it does well and in a good way. But uh, all right, enough of me talking. I'm running out. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.